that they still haven't. My students, there is a certain innocence to them. And so they they watch this movie and uh, the gory part where it comes out of his chest, you know, they're ah, they freak out for that. But they never were. They were never bored. Uh, the slow pacing, they really appreciate it because it ends up ratcheting the tension as the movie goes on. You know, all the hyper cuts that you end up seeing in the Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator 2, which are just awful movies. You really appreciate the slowness of Alien. I feel like Koreans probably have a... Uh, uh, just just for my love of Korean cinema, cinema uh, it, it is very... It lets you breathe a little bit. The wailing. Uh, even Train of Busan takes a while to get going. You have I Saw the Devil, the yep. host... Uh, thirst. Mm -hmm. I, I think maybe they're just used to that. Do you, uh, that makes me happy that they appreciate that storytelling because I'm afraid to show this to my students. I don't know if they'll start looking at their phones immediately. I mean, the landing scene, do you know how long that landing scene <laughs> was? <laughs> when they're just... They get time for the music to come out and the ship is very slowly turning to the left. If that was today, it'd be like, okay, we landed. Yeah. Like Jer Jerry Goldsmith's <laughs> so score is just booming. Yeah, yeah. They give the 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 only computer graphics that you see, you know, those terrible vector graphics. I'm centering the vector now. That was not necessary. No. And I, but it was beautiful. I love that they had a forklift for that scene, and so it they 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 covered it up in black, and then they put the camera. So that the camera couldn't see the thing being pulled out. So all that was just practical effects. Like they built those on actual sound stages. Well, this is the my students when they when they were watching Alien and Aliens, and I'm telling them none of this is CGI, and they're just what? <laughs> because they're 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 just stunned by it. You know, they they there's there's three guys running the Alien Queen, and you never see somebody's you know Calvin Klein jeans pop out. It's it's just a great movie. Now, I, I, so I was I was thinking about this. And, and let's ignore Prometheus for the time being. Oh, yes. Let's. So they go into the, the, the fallen spaceship. So they're space truckers. They get woken up uh, early because they, there's a distress signal. So they have to go check this distress signal out. And they find this this crashed ship, and they go inside it. And the, in, the, the, the thing looks like a rib cage. I mean, you get the famous Giger space jockey, the famous Giger egg. You get all the really yes. beautiful, twisted, beautiful designs. I just said beautiful, twisted, beautiful. Jeez, ways. Uh, so <laughs> this space jockey. Okay, ignore Prometheus. Absolutely. Does he know what he's? Does he know he, he's transporting weapons? Correct. She or she? It. If you, it is transporting weapons. Ignoring ignoring Prometheus, you get no vibe as to what the hell is going on there, other than this thing. You know, you don't even realize that that it could be a helmet. You know, and the expanded universe in the comics, you know, that's just that's the face of the thing. Actually, it's not a helmet. That's just what it looks like. So the vibe you get, the more you watch it before Prometheus and all of that was something went wrong. Something popped out of this thing's chest, man. You know, they make a point, you know, it looks like it's blown outward. It's just a dark place. This is a dark place. And you never get the vibe that that good things are coming at all. It looked brilliant. It stuff. looked like they were being transported. And then those yeah. things are idiots. So then they crashed. And then how? So that guy had been fossilized. That that thing had been fossilized. So those eggs, had they been la laying there for thousands of years? For all that time. And you assume that that's more of, of a medical table than it is uh, the pilot seat. Yeah. You know? Because they call it a space – they called it the space jockey, but it looks to you like it's a doctor thing or just a bed where the thing laid down to die. And, uh, yeah, those eggs have been there just the whole time, just chilling. That little uh, light film where – that never comes up again in any alien stuff. You yeah. know? <laughs> so it's just really weird. Inside of those eggs, it was Ridley Scott's hands doing like a little butterfly type motion oh, that's great so i thought that was really kind of cool <laughs> that they were doing that but what was the thin layer of gas that was above those things did that keep them dormant none of this none of this stuff ever comes up never. again because yeah. when 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 it when it when you get to uh, the hive in aliens there is no gas you know there's just corpses everywhere and oh yeah the queen is is, is kind of hung up by her womb on a wall it's it's just crazy stuff that goes on man. Uh, did you show your students the director's cut of the regular oh i showed my students the director's cut of With aliens Dal much better dallas squished on the wall ah the director's cut of alien no oh, alien because got it i showed them i showed my students the director's cut of aliens i showed them the theatrical cut of alien 
because not too I, I didn't feel that the director's cut of Alien added too much. You know, you get the longer opening sequence of the camera going through the hallways, and then you get uh, Veronica Cartwright just smacking fire out of Sigourney Weaver. That's yeah. a great scene. <laughs> she, she's like, oh man, that was that was bad. They should have kept that. Yeah. <laughs> you left us out there. <laughs> I'd be pissed if I got hit and they cut that scene. Dude. And the thing about Veronica Cartwright in the 70s, she was basically just paid to freak out in every movie. <laughs> You're just, oh, oh Jesus. Ah, you know, body snatchers. Oh, oh no, yeah. No, no. <laughs> she, her goal is to freak out. Those huge eyes, just wet and terrified. I am freaked out. I'm Veronica Cartwright. She won a Saturn Award yeah. for that performance. She did some good freaking out. She freaks out in everything, man, and she's great. And then he, I think they put her in the X-Files, and she was freaking out in the X-Files, too. You've got to shoot him now. Don't you understand? I've been running out of right. Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she freaks out in everything, in everything. I liked yeah. Tom Skerritt's decisions in this film, especially I liked how quiet he was, Dallas. Dallas was – Oh, was, yeah. That's a decision that I thought was interesting. So on set, since this was Ridley's second major film after Duelist, he had done a lot mm -hmm. of commercials and music videos beforehand. They said on set he was really bad with the actors. He would just basically say, this is what the scene is, and this is where I'm shooting. So if they <laughs> went to him for guidance, he gave them none. So I feel like the creation of what Skerritt did is this very soft-spoken captain. It's a very interesting decision. I, I don't know what you think about that. It's because it's because you know you and I we've we've had job experience, you know, and you run into that boss that just okay. So what do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Hey, boss, I'm doing the following project. Uh, what do you think I should do? Yeah, sure, that's fine. Because that was Tom Skerritt's character, man. He just he just wants to fly the ship from point A to point B and not die. That's it. Everything else is irrelevant. He's not super controlly guy. He's cool with uh well Kane, you know, while he was still alive. He's cool with delegating responsibility and letting Kane talk stuff, you know. He doesn't give it he he, he lets them talk shit about the bonus situation for how long yeah. until he finally just says, Okay, enough. You know? Yeah. We'll figure it out. We have to do Remember this. they're down in the cave? Yeah. And they're arguing back and forth, and he's like, "Enough!" So, like, when they start acting like kids, that's when he steps in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, you know, he doesn't give a shit. He's like, "Yeah, okay, you know, we're all in outer space. We're truckers. You know, we're gonna go, you know, go fly to space, and then when we get back, we're gonna get laid." You know, that's and it, he man. gets it too that he he understand like when mother when when the, the when the rules change when they get a new order, he's like, "Whatever." Right. Like that's the company they pay me. And he's like, yeah, you, the, you do what the company tells you to do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's it, man. I, I, he's like, can I go home now? Jesus Christ. Are we done yet? <laughs> That's it. I just, it, it is kind of annoying. So I was watching Alien Covenant, and I'd, I, I'd like to talk with you about that one day just to kind of get your thoughts. But no watching this movie, I, I kind of make fun of scenes in Alien Covenant where they look directly into the egg. Or in Prometheus when they go up to the space snake. And like, oh, you're oh, adorable. Just... But in this one, Hurt makes the same mistakes. Yeah, I, I know. I, I know. Right. I'm saying Hurt. Like he has, a, you know, Kane. But yeah, Kane. That's... Kane does the same thing. So it's pretty. It, yes, it's he pretty does. interesting how in in very in uh, in what we call great films, you can ignore that. But what we would call yeah. decent films, we say that's stupid. Okay, here's the thing. Kane's an explorer. They, their their goal is to actually go out and find out, you know, what the hell, where is the, uh, wh who's sending the distress signal? And then he comes across the eggs naturally, and the thing opens up. And you're like, oh, okay, that's weird. Prometheus, the guy sees a dangerous-looking snake, and, oh, you're so cute. Yes, you're a cute girl. What the hell? What the hell? Hoffmeyer, I've seen people who see dogs on the side of the street that don't just run up. Oh, you're such a cute little puppy. It didn't make any sense, dude. Yeah, that was bad. It didn't make, it didn't make any sense. And then you mentioned uh, what the other – who's the other so, guy? Oh, in Yeah, when, when Michael Fassbender is like, hey, come here, Billy Crudup. I think it's Billy Crudup. Yes, it hey, was. Hey, come look in this egg. Yeah. What, why? No, yes. just come here. Come here. Come look in this egg. The And, and that's the thing, you know. He's surrounded by this room full of basically horror, 
that 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 uh that Michael Fassbender's character has just been drawing basically uh disturbing fan art all over the wall. And then he tells you, hey, this is my latest creation. Oh, and it's actually alive. Why don't you stick your face in it? He's like, okay. Come on, man. <laughs> That's the difference. Just, and then there's another scene in Alien Covenant where this guy's like, get away from me. I'm going to go take a piss. And he walks about 50 yeah. yards by himself and pulls a Lost World. And oh, no, wait. Yeah, follow, yeah, Lost World. Like uh, Peter Stormare yeah. gets killed by copies. Uh, yes. Now, before we go to break, I just have one more thing I want to bring up to you. And I have this in all caps several times through my notes. And my notes look like the, the scribblings of a madman, by the way. If someone got a hold of this notebook, they'd be worried for me. But uh, just letting you know. Clearly. Uh, I wrote down knob turning and flicking switches. I hate. So I, I just had to write a couple articles about Star Wars for Rotten Tomatoes and Cracked. And watching the movies again, I just realized how much, and in this film, the amount of arbitrary knob turning and flicking of switches. People walk in rooms, and they're just like... Turn, 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 yes. turn, 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 and then they look behind their back, they take their right arm, they put it behind their head, and they just start poking things. Like, like in the Millennium Falcon, there's random guys who have never been on the ship before turning knobs, and you're just, like, why are you doing this? Why, what, what is this switch? Why do you know these 7,000 switches? Did you notice that about Alien? Look, man, you know, sometimes you got to make sure that the interocitor is set up correctly for the 1.21 gigawatts, man. You can't get mad at stuff like that, brother. You just got to roll with it, you know? Do you think that just anybody is allowed to just walk into the room of Mother without sticking the graphics card into the side of the wall after flicking the 17 switches to open that little slot? No! No, there are qualifications that come with being the ship's captain, my friend. Take that. I just, I think the directors, like, flick some switches... Like, there's never flick that switch, then that switch, then that switch. They're, they just go to the actor. Listen, you're the pilot. You flick any switches you want. So they go in. These actors have never flown a, 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 tw a, a junker with 20 million tons of of whatever they're hauling. <laughs> and they just start flicking switches. 20, 20 million tons of yeah. ore, man. You know, there's a lot of switches to be to be flipped when you're hauling 20 million tons of you ore. You have to flip 74. Of, listen, if you're a spaceship, if you have to flip 74 switches to turn on your blinker, you're in trouble. Have you ever seen the inside of a, of a, of a 747? There's a lot of switches, brother. But they're not clicking them. They're so not clicking them all. I watched Kurt Russell land a plane in executive for, uh, decision. He right? didn't flick it. He flipped three switches. <laughs> he flicked three switches? Yes. Kurt Russell does not need many switches. How many switches did he flip, though? Like three. And uh, Holly Berry did about four. And she was reading a manual. That's the, like, when you watch that movie and they're, they're not, they're not, like, if, I, God, if it, it looks like they're changing the channel on a radio that has nothing good on. Remember back in the day when you're just turning the knobs looking for something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> click, 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 click. I don't know. So I, that's one, it's a, it's, a, it's a nitpick. It's not nothing, it's nothing big. But when you've just watched a lot of these movies a lot, you just get very – maybe if I hadn't done the rewatch recently of the Star Wars movies. Like, like yeah. I'm serious. The only guy who doesn't flick switches a lot – so when Vader's in a TIE fighter, he's turning a knob yeah. the entire time. I don't know what – That's but it. But then you see the other guys flying TIE fighters. They never turn knobs. Well, Vader was turning the knob so that he could increase the gain on the targeting for that one ship all too easy that he blew up. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's – oh, gosh. But – He's got the force, dude. Just leave him alone. He's got the force. And then Wedge. Wedge never flicks switches. So only time Wedge ever flicks a switch, he's like, we need to get out of here. He goes, boop, hits one switch. Or we're making the tunnel that's run. Right. Boop, puts a switch. Like that's that's good acting right there. It's not like we got to make the tunnel run. Slick, 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 slick. Turn, 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 turn. Like 97.1, put on some Pearl Jam. Listen, like, listen. Hey, like Sigourney said, I'm enhancing the vector now. Switch, okay? She's enhancing the vector, you know? When they're in Star Trek and they're just... Dee, 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 and if we increase the gain to the deflector shield 17 times, it's the opposite. It, it's it, it's what you do when you don't want to just techno babble. You flip switches. You understand? You, instead of filling it in with techno babble and then the the metaphor so that the audience understands it's just flip 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 okay now we blew it up too many switches 
Two. <laughs> All right, so how about this? Now, let's take a break. I'm going to stop talking about...